I've been scoring goals at Reims for fun. I hope to be a starter at Arsenal, but we've got many stars and the competition for places is tough. Me and my man gonna be hustling for starting spots, fam. Tell me, would you take me over any of the strikers at Arsenal right now? Not calling no names, but this boy be scoring more goals than your boys them combined. Gunner for life, but I needs to be the main man. If you guarantee that, then I'm gonna sign the team quick, quick. This is not Polar and Belogan. This is an AI test and it's scary as crap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Arsenal Stories by Mr. Spruce. Check out the blog too. What's the deal with Balogun? What should you expect from our game against West Ham? And Chesney can't breathe. Like, for real, he couldn't breathe during a game. Welcome to Arsenal Stories by Mr. Spruce. Yes, thank you. I've been on a partially self-imposed hiatus. It used to be just a Mr. Sp can't speak now. It used to just be the Mr. Spruce blog and I would just churn out news, chasing readership. So, but now, now this whole thing has changed direction. It's an emotional investment now. A feel good channel, blog, whatever. After Wenger, there was so much vitriol in the blogosphere and I had to step back. Yeah, blogosphere, is that even still a word? Anyways. So, welcome to Arsenal Stories by Mr. Spruce. It's going to be about celebrating our club, players and fans. And no, you won't get stats here. At least, not like that. Maybe barely even. Nah, no stats. Can't be constipating myself on stats. Leave that to the experts. Canon stats and maybe a different knock. And if you haven't checked both their um, channels and substack, you should. Now, moving on to the meat of... Okay, that came out so long. Moving out to the crux of this podcast. So, I... I hope you like the piece that we did with uh, AI um, using uh, Folari Balogun. Yeah, AI is scary. But moving on, we're going to be talking about the deal about Folari Balogun. And I just want to get my notes here because I put down some things that we're going to talk about. Now, Folari Balogun, my Nigerian compatriot, has been... Okay, I'm claiming him now because he's so good, but, you know, whatever. He's been the revelation of the entire European season, maybe, I, I think. I mean, we know that they are good players, the players that we expect to be wow, you know, to have that wow effect, but nobody really expected Balogun to go uh, and do what he's done with Nice, and, oh, not with Nice, with Reims, and... Yes, I know people would say that the French League is the Farmers League, but that doesn't take away from the fact that Man has scored 18 goals in 29 games and had two assists. Now, would he be able to do that in the Premier League? I don't know. You know, where the defenders are tougher, stronger, probably more aggressive. And thank goodness he didn't play in the time of Ryan Shawcross. Poor boy's legs would have been muddled up, you know, but the question remains, you know, can he do this in the Premier League? And we also have rumours, I, I was reading The Athletic, um, there's been rumours that AC Milan, Inter, Marseille, Mon Monaco and Leipzig, if that's how to pronounce it, are after his signature. Now, let me just go quickly to the um, Athletic uh, article, because I have that open on my laptop here. They um, talk a lot about how he's got competition in Gabriel and then uh, Eddie and if he would be able to dislodge those guys. Now a lot of people on Twitter are saying they'll take Balogun over Eddie and Ketia. I don't know. But I know Balogun offers something different in that he's, he's bigger, taller, and maybe more of a target man, I don't know. But you know, a lot of people are saying that they would sell Eddie 
and keep our logo. And, and maybe rightly so, uh, at the Athletic also bring up the fact that we've made good sales with people like Iwobi, who were surplus to requirements, and with, uh, who they say now, with uh, Joe Willock, who's been doing amazing at, live, at uh, Newcastle, by the way. Now, if you think we should sell Balogun and keep Eddie, because obviously there's no point talking about selling um, Gabriel Jesus, which, nah, that's not even the topic up for discussion. But for uh, between Balogun and Inketia, who would you prefer? Who would you rather take? Let me know in the comments below, okay? And also, uh, we're also looking at someone who could potentially, because he's younger, and he's, his uh, market is really burning up right now. He could probably fetch us more than Inketia could. I'm just saying, he's English and he's really good. At least right now, he's really good. So maybe we take uh, money for Balogun and add that to maybe Kaisedo, which will be talk coming to um later in the podcast we'll be talking about Kaisedo and what do Arsenal fans think so I've been talking with a couple of us this week you know so moving on we talk about our game we're moving on to our game um, against West Ham and by the way if you want to link or to read the uh, article about Balogun it's in the description below it's um if you've got a free um subscription to the athletic you should be able to read that i think yeah you should i don't think it's, it's behind a paid wall anyways moving on to our game against western what are the odds i don't want us to go into that game thinking we're all that yes people people have been pandering the phrase every game is a final and maybe rightly so but you know i just want us to go and build confidence with that game, with a win, you know, going forward and where we eventually meet tougher teams like City, obviously, and Newcastle, and I think we have Chelsea. We need to win, win every game right now. Yeah. So I was talking to a seasoned Arsenal fan this week after work, and he said he'd prefer, he'd prefer Carcedo over Declan Rice as Partey's cover. So basically he wants, he'd rather that we got Caicedo to cover for Partey. And then he he prefers Caicedo over Rice, but would want Rice as Xhaka's cover. So you see, I mean, obviously Xhaka would end up being Rice's cover, but the point is, if he had to choose one person, if we only had to buy one, he would choose Caicedo but he'd rather that we had both so that Rice you know um takes Xhaka's place and then Xhaka acts as cover because he's getting older but he's got unquantifiable qualities that will be beneficial to the team and then he'll take you know Caicedo as his successor what do you think let me know in the comments and do you think let me know in the comments below but do you think we can actually afford both say we sell for like Balogun for like 35 million pounds or 40 million pounds and add that to a transfer kitty and then go ahead and splurge just to two midfield mid, midfielders um, Rice and Kaisedo and then uh, we just make do with what we have up front maybe get a winger that's not pressing but you know Kaisedo and Rice let me know what you think in the, the um, comments below. Anyways, for our game against um, West Ham on Sunday, we need to be careful of Paqueta. He seems to be finding his form now. Bowen and also Rice. Well, Rice would probably want to put on a show for Arteta. Let Arteta know what he's missing. So Rice might want to put up a show, but those are players that we should be wary of. And then Mikel Antonio can be a pest. He can, he's strong, he's fast, and he's, he's a pest. So we'd have to keep him quiet. Um, we can't make any silly mistakes at all. And for the love of God, once we're one or two goals up, can Mikel Ateta put in Kieran Tierney because he's much better defensively? I think we suffered a lot 
in our game against Liverpool because Liverpool kind of figured out that we were weak on the left after a while, so they kept peppering Zinchenko. I'm not no issues with Zinchenko, it's just fact remains that he's better technically than than uh, Tierney, but when you need someone who can give you good defensive qualities and as well whip in decent crosses, his passing may not be as sublime as Zinchenko, but you need a Tierney and I would rather we sold, um, what's his name, this guy we learned to to Olymp Olympic Maciel, uh, oh dear god, I forgot his name. I'm pausing this and I'm going to look for his name. Give me a second. Nuno Tavares. Yes. I, you know, he's been gone so long, I've almost forgotten he's there. Um, so I'd rather we, we sold Nuno and kept Tierney. I know he's injury prone, but if we have, if we keep Dinchenko and Nuno, we basically have one left back that can score and is prone to horrible mistakes and maybe has a little bit of an attitude problem and Zinchenko who's beautiful with in the midfield and with passing but not just just basic defensively or decent defensively we need a left back that can defend so I'd rather we that's why I'm thinking sell Nuno for a decent amount and you know keep Zinchenko and keep Tierney yeah those are my thoughts let me know what you think in the comments below now moving on to Chesney, I think I know this is old news, but it just got me worried because he can sometimes be an annoyance, but there's no doubt that he loves Arsenal. And me seeing that news that he struggled with breathing in the game against um, Sporting Lisbon, I think. Yes, who they they did pretty well against. I think they won that game. Got me worried. The footballers and health issues, especially with their hearts and lungs and such uh, but i hope he gets better soon guys send him good good messages on his twitter on his instagram wherever wherever he is on social media now we've got this blog where we look at what gunners are saying on social media and we uh, pull tweets and reddit conversations and also um, blogs that we've happened upon and we really like the articles that they've put out or at least one article that they've put out and this week there's this really good piece on the athletic about uh, about matthew flamini but this really good beautiful piece on matthew flamini on how he went from protecting arsenal to protecting the planet okay i kid you not i rolled my eyes at the protecting arsenal part i mean he was a decent dm right i mean he was he was not, he was no part day, but he was good. I mean, he was a fantastic utility player, like the pocket knife or the Swiss knife midfielder. He could play DM, he could, I think he could play CP, could he? Can't remember, but he was usually that guy who could do everything in the midfield and he really scored crucial goals for us. But, you know, I just, I'm not sure why I rolled my eyes at the protecting Arsenal part, but I did, part that I did. Now, if you want to read that article, it's a really good article. We'll leave the, this, the link in the description below. Also, there's an, another article by Peter, Peter of Le Groove, the one of the Le Groove blog. And it was talking about us bracing ourselves up for the game against Man City. That's, that game, hopefully, will be more attention packed than the game against Liverpool, than the game against Manchester United. I'm not sure that I have enough strength in my heart to watch that game. I mean, there's no point having a heart attack and dying by myself. And these guys are running around the field, yes, sweat and blood, but earning £200,000 a week and having the best medical care. I, I refuse to be put under that sort of pressure. No. So I will be watching from my phone, like the football apps I have on my phone. I will be watching for updates. Besides, I think I go to work that day. No, it's a Sunday. I don't know. But he says that Arsenal fans are, you know, crapping themselves talking about that game. And he says there are some Arsenal fans he can't take to battle because they're just going to um, run off and leave him there by himself because they're basically spineless. I agree. Yes, Peter, I'm a wuss. I 
can't be someone you take for a battle or to war or take to the pub for breakfast and such. That's fine. I just can't put myself to, through that much you know, stress. The link to LeGru's um, blog or article, that article is in the description below. Now the Arsenal tweet of the week, which I thought was really funny. Now I'm not sure how I can you know, explain the um, tweet, but it was by Arsenal Harmony. So Arsenal at Arsenal Harmony with an I. Uh, and it was like a video clip with Henri where uh, he was asked who kicked Juve out of the Champions League league and they didn't know that it was actually him who scored the goal and gave the assist and it was really funny so I'll leave a link to that tweet in the description below as well just so you can read it read it and have a laugh and finally this is the part where we talk about sponsors but we don't have any yet so <laughs> we're moving off on from that real quick yeah so i try i'm going to try to make this podcast really short except well we have interviews with arsenal fans or we get to interview arsenal fans then it might be maybe 10 15 minutes long but i hope you enjoyed it tell us or tell me because it's just me doing this right now so tell me what you'd like to see no stats no one should talk about stats here now nah, it, it, it's no so tell me what you'd like to see or hear since it's a podcast at the elite podcast um, part of this channel and tell me what you'd rather we didn't do so here's to a good weekend and here's to a win against west ham and have an amazing amazing week coming up okay that's all for today gunners have a good one